Engineering, I'm Alan. It's a nice sunny day today so it's an ideal time to get into the workshop and do one or two of the little jobs that I've been meaning to do. A collet holder for an ER20 collet and it comprises of basically a bar with a taper and a thread to suit an ER20 collet and this end of the machine to suit my tool and cutter grinder. And by using a standard ER20 collet and nut I can now hold smaller drills like centre drills. It's quite an easy project. We'll get in the workshop, see how we make it. It's 22 degrees in the workshop. This is a rough sketch of what we're making today. So what I've got is a piece of uh, bar that I bought the steel stock holder and off cut, it's like that. Just it's a 25mm bar. The problem I have the thread on the end of this, the OD's 25mm. So I can't afford to have any run out and waste up any material. I don't really want to turn the outside down, I want to leave it as it is. So I've clocked it up and got it running to within a thou. On this uh, indicator, each division is half a thou, so it's running within a thou there. So I'm going to face it off, centre drill it, and see if I can just touch the outside to give me a nice diameter. That's 2488. I think this will be too small. 2485. So that is virtually the same size as the outside of that thread. This part behind the thread is a bit bigger, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I've turned the compound slide around to about 8 degrees. I'll machine a taper in the bore and then try one of the collets to see whether it needs adjusting or not. just starting to go in there. I'll compare this to the original one. It doesn't go right in, it goes in just before the, the cutout. I'm using some micrometer blue. Let's put that around the edge. You don't need it too thick. The thicker you put it on, the more difficult it is to figure out whether you've got the right angle or not. It just wants a thin coating. So when you put it in the bore, just turn it. You can see it's just touching on the outside, it is touching further back as well. 
so it doesn't look far out that I'll leave it as it is and just bore it a bit deeper Obviously if I push this in too far it'll close in because it's, it's an expanding collet. So all I'm doing is pushing it in gently and just turning it. So looking at the, the finish it is very close to the taper. I think it just needs a bit more on the outside so I'll just adjust the angle. I've adjusted that up to just over eight degrees, probably eight and a half degrees, so we'll see how that goes. That's the right angle. You can see there that the blue marks are on the beginning, the beginning of the bore and right up to the end. Now the depth on this is about four and a half mil. On the original one it's about the same. I think that's okay for the depth. What I'm going to do next is take the sharp edges off and I think we'll set up to cut the thread on the outside. When you're polishing a ball, you can make this little polishing stick. Basically it's a piece of dowel, saw slot in the end, wrap your strip of emery around it. Then when you do the layer, you rub it up and down the ball. Mm. Safer than taking a piece of emery, putting your finger in, because what can happen, this edge can be sharp, so it'll slice your finger, or if it does jam up, the only thing that's going to do, happen is your skin will turn around on your finger. So be very wary about putting your fingers inside bores that are rotating at high speed. Time to make one of those. 30 seconds. Saw slot in the end of a piece of dell. This is the thread I want to cut on the outside of the bar. We use these thread gauges, which are basically a replica of each pitch of the thread. And I think it's 1.5 millimeters. So if you fit that onto there, if it fits correctly, you know that's the right pitch. Do is use the the nut as the gauge and I'll set up the lathe to cut the thread and I'm using this little tool for cutting the thread it's a 4mm high speed steel 60 degree the correct angle for the metric thread so I'll set that on centre line now we want to cut a 1.5mm pitch thread For a 1.5mm pitch we need a 48 gear, a 24 gear and an 80 gear. Now I fitted the gear so you've got the 24 tooth gear on the stud, an 80 tooth gear 
on the idler and the 48 tooth gear on the lead screw. So I'll oil the through the hole. Okay. I've just used the center in a tail in the tail stock to center the tip, the tool tip. Okay, so set the tool square to the job. What I'm doing is using the chuck jaw. You can just see the tool down here. Move it up to the chuck jaw. Well, the tool post is loose, so I can wind it backwards. And as I push it into the chuck jaw, it lines itself. Just nip it up there. Let's check that it's touching all the way along and then lock it. And that puts the tool square. Now what I want to do is just put a, a cut at the end of the thread. So when the tool runs into that, I know it's the right length. Just put some felt tip pen on there, just to just move it down till. Just check that we are getting 1.5 millimeters pitch. It lines up okay. So what I'm going to do now is slow the speed down. I'm not going to disconnect my lead screw, otherwise I'll lose my position. I can slow the speed down and engage the back gear. do it. It just wants a polish I think. chamfer on the beginning. Okay. Let's try it with a collet. Okay. I've turned the part round so that he's now held in the chuck. I've clocked it up true, well as true as I can get it. Now I'm going to part this off to the length I need. Shop. 
that up, I think. This is a parting off tool blade. It's already preformed and ground with a taper on it. So all you need to do when you sharpen it is reform the angle and the sharp edge. So about seven degrees on the front, so it's only the the tip that's going to be seven degrees. And I'll grind that to I'm using the the tool holder up here as a guide. This is a tool holder and the way the blade fits in it rests on the ledge at the bottom and you have a wedge that goes in from the side and as you tighten the screws up in that it pulls the wedge in and pushes, clamps the, the blade. Okay I've re replaced it in the lathe, squared it, squared it back up and see how it cuts. doing is making it a bit what the slot I'm cutting a bit wider so that there's less pressure on the blade on the side the speed of that is about 210 revs per minute I've changed to my four jaw chuck, so all I need to do now is reduce this down to 15.75. At the moment it's 25, I think it was. Yeah, 25. Okay, I've roughed it out using this, the tip of the tool. Let's remove the spore for that. And obviously the finish is, is rubbish. So what I'm going to do now is just turn the tool slightly so I'm using not the tip, a bit more of the edge of the tool. See if I can improve the finish. Job done. All I'm going to do now is put the chamfer on the end, break the sharp corners. Okay, I've changed, put the chamfer tool in. Just hope I can get it in there.
little chamfer on the end of the bore. Give it a polish. And see how that looks. If you're wondering what, what this is for, so a tool and cutter grinder and this is the standard tool holder. Normally you make bushes like that for each diameter tool. What I've done is made that fits in there. Now I can put any size drill in there up to half inch as long as the length is within the, the grinding distance. Well thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did why not subscribe and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.